Hello everyone, my name is Akshya and today in this video I'm going to show you how to set up LDAP using a custom utility which was developed in-house and the current version of that is version 3. So in this video I'm going to show you what this uh, LDAP utility consists of, what are the prerequisites needed for this utility, the advantage or advantages of using this, the installation setup steps and then a couple of parameters needed for this. So this is a custom utility which was built in-house and um, what it does is uh, it helps developers integrate MDM with LDAP search base based authentication when for example the search base is not direct. Uh, for example if you want to authenticate based on an email ID or a SAM account username and uh, the search base is not pretty straightforward or direct then you can use this uh, utility instead. To get the utility files itself you need to raise a ticket with uh, Informatica GCS support and then we will be able to provide you with the files. Uh, the key, there is a KB uh, if you want to just take a look at the steps and the prerequisites and everything and how to set it up before you want you know you think that this is the correct utility for you. You can do that and the article and link is here. So uh, this is a KB uh, title and that's what is mentioned in the presentation as well. And uh, this has a couple of steps and everything that's needed. So it's pretty simple and straightforward and I'll be showing you this today. So talking about prerequisites, uh, obviously the most uh, common and obvious one is you need to have the Active Directory or LDAP setup established with a service account or username password. So if you have any doubts on this, your admin or LDAP team can help you with the service account username password. It's more like a super admin user that's needed to log into LDAP. See, advantages of using this utility is uh, there is no need to deploy any Java code uh, or maintain any Java code or even uh, modify any Java code. So there's nothing to do with uh, Java code here. It's all a simple UI based uh, buttons and forms. And for example, it is uh, in some organizations, you may be asked to rotate the service account username password quite often say like once in 90 days or once in six months for security reasons and then um, in that case what you can do is simply use this tool since it's a UI you just have to click a few buttons it'll roll back the user account name password and simply you can uh, re-enter the username password again or update it and uh, you're good to go so you don't have to touch anything else and so the, there's ease of rotating the password is an advantage here instead. So you don't need any developer intervention. You can just do it yourself. Um, it works with HTTPS setup as well. So for example, many of you would have enabled HTTPS in your MDM environment. So you can still continue to use that. It's not that it works with both HTTP and HTTPS. Works with all app servers. So any kind of JBoss, WebSphere, WebLogic has been tested and works with any of those. And then there is also um, uh, advanced logging. Uh, uh, stuff added so if there is any issue then uh, you can definitely open a case with us and or you can it's of check the logs to find out where exactly the issue so it's uh, quite uh, there's been improvements on the code side to increase the logging so uh, setup and installation uh, I will show you this demo using my local box which is running uh, WebSphere and on 10.3 version of MDM this is supported on 10.4 as well so uh, first step is you need to deploy a specific war file uh, which will be provided when you open the case with uh, GCS and uh, when you're ready to implement this. So that war file um, is called uh, MDM custom login config app dot war. So you have to, uh, you know, if you are if you have permissions to deploy on WebSphere, you can do that or you can contact your admin team to help you with this uh, deployment. And JBoss is pretty straightforward as well, right? Uh, the only um, only issue or the only catch with uh, using WebSphere is that while you are deploying this, uh, at this point um, where it asks for the context route, you need to provide uh, 
the name itself so if the module you just simply copy paste the module name and put a slash and then enter the same module name and that's about it so that's the first step you will deploy the war file and in case of a cluster right so you will install this everything on node one and in the url okay i will talk about the url so you will uh, do all the setup on node one and then simply copy the folder which is located here under hub server support saml sso to the other nodes and then you will restart all the nodes you just do it on one node and that's it and simply copy it over from node one to node two uh, and the second step is you need to, um, after deploying the war file, you need to uh, place this folder called SAML SSO, which will be also provided as part of the installation steps under hub server support directory, right? So uh, in case of a single node, you'll just do this. Uh, and in case of cluster, you will copy the contents only after you have set it up on node one. Okay. So let me... Um, go to my environment box and uh, show you about that so in my uh, box under infa mdm hub server support i have placed this folder called saml sso and this would be the structure of it right So, and then after you've deployed the war file and placed the folder, you will go to the browser and hit this URL, which will be HTTP or HTTPS host and HTTP or HTTPS port and this. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so here, this is how the login page would look like, uh, similar to any other, you know, admin log console login page. Here it would be the hub console admin username and password. So I'm going to enter that. And then in the next line, here is the connect URL that you will use, or the URL that you use to launch your hub console. The same thing. So in my case, it was localhost 9080. So I'm going to use that itself. So I click login and it'll take me to this uh, create a page where uh, there are two options one is to enable search based ldap which is what i'm showing you in this video and there's already a video about a single sign-on so you can refer that so these are two separate components uh, you can uh, have both but uh, for the sake of uh, which is very uh, rare but uh, for the sake of clarity i'm just showing you search based ldap in this video so in our case, we're going to click on this option and you'll see a couple of other parameters pop up. And then there, uh, to the right, you have a certain uh, parameters uh, that are common to both. And uh, I can explain to you each of them. So first one is a custom login provider. So, and obviously asterisk here means everything is mandatory. Uh, these are default, so I would suggest leave them as is. Uh, this first one is in my case, this is my LDAP box where I have the Active Directory setup. So I'm providing it with uh, that. It is either, um, it can be either 389 with LDAP or LDAP SN 696. And this is the uh, search base. Uh, I will log into the box and show you my setup so you'll know. And this is the service account user's distinguished name. It's not just a service account username, but it is actually the distinguished name. So in uh, this case, it'll be this whole um, CN equal to GCS admin, CN is users and all the DC, the full distinguished name. And then uh, I have the password. Let me enter that. The good thing about this is the password is uh, hidden, so you don't have to worry about exposing it to anyone. And uh, I would, uh, yeah, the only option is simple, so keep that as simple. And the context factory is also default, don't change or do anything to this. And this one is the identifying attribute. In my case, the username that I'm gonna use to log in with uh, MDM and also the username that is set up on my Active Directory or LDAP is uh, the UID. Uh, you can also have 
uh, email address and uh, based on that you can search with a search based string and then log in or you can also have the sam account id it depends on the setup you have in your organization so uh, you can verify that with your team and choose the appropriate uh, values for that uh, these are the only three we support for now but if you have any other uh, other attribute that is not listed you can always like uh, raise a case with us and we can uh, customize that or uh, improve that for you uh, for your team uh, so this one uh, on the right is first to skip external authentication so uh, yes yeah, so it won't check whether the admin is uh, present in ldap and there's also present in the hub console uh, because anyway you are uh, admin is uh, super user and it, it is needed for login and skip validation of LDAP or SSO server is uh, when I check this, it means that it will not try to hit this URL and validate whether it's able to connect. Uh, I know in my case it does. So uh, if you want to confirm that, you know, if you want this, your, uh, if you want this code or if you don't know about this IP address and you're not sure and you want this application to validate it before it can create the uh, LDAP uh, for you, you can always uncheck it. Uh, so that means by uncheck, it means that it will validate. So if it's not able to connect to this URL uh, and this port, it will throw an error. And uh, next one is the application type, server type, because it supports all three. Uh, you need to choose which one you're using. In my case, it's WebSphere. And the database I'm using is SQL Server. So yes, we do support all three. So uh, this is what I'm doing. So these are the parameters and the description of these parameters are all mentioned in this KB as well. So you can come here under additional information and see what um, these uh, uh, represent, right? And also, uh, yeah, let me log into the um, search base and also show you about that. So in my case, the um, user account is GCS admin. So I did a right click and uh, properties. And if you go under attribute editor, you'll find distinguished name. So this is what uh, I have copied over to this. Uh, this is the value for that. And the search space of the user is uh, only on DC. Okay. So I'm going to hit publish. So if it's successful and there's no error, it will say SSO custom login module enable successfully and please restart the server. So uh, you need to restart your WebSphere or JBoss or WebLogic for this uh, to take place. Uh, for the effects to take place, let me restart. So now uh, the server is restarted and again, once you log in, uh, you will see that these values have been populated and uh, none of these will be editable. So it'll show you uh, from, it'll pick up the installation server folder and everything. So yeah, let's log in to the hub console and let me show you what it has done. <clears throat> So I've logged into MDM now and I'm choosing the user, uh, sorry, ORS. And if you go to security providers now, you will see that there is a custom login module created in today's date. And also you will see here under providers that uh, all the parameters that we provided on the UI has now present under this as well. So the same exact parameters that you used will now be populated on MDM Hub Console. So this uh, uh, utility will create this custom login module for you on the Hub Console. So the only action now needed from your end is that it, you need to create that LDAP user here in your user account. Uh, and uh, obviously you need to choose uh, use external authentication when you're creating. So you will provide the username details and instead of providing the password here, you will click on the use external authentication because uh, this will be authenticated using the LDAP, right? So that's what I've done for this user. 
and once that user is present on the LDAP side and also register here under Hub Console, uh, you can go ahead and log in with that user and now you should be able to log in as that user. So yes, this is all that the uh, utility does and these are all the parameters that we talked about and uh, uh, yeah, so that's it for this utility. Thank you and uh, we'd like to hear from you. So if you have any feedback that you'd like to provide, please feel free to reach out uh, at these email uh, or links and uh, let us know how we did. Thank you.